My first gaming memories are from devices just like this. This is a Nintendo Game Boy Color. Uh, the several Zelda games on this platform were formative for me and Metroid 2 arguably began my lifelong love of science fiction, along with arcade classics like Asteroids, Galaga and Missile Command. Many years later I got a 3D printer as a kit, there it is, and I realised I could make small, complex, accurate 3D plastic bits, and I had a go at turning a Game Boy Pocket into some sort of games console. I didn't really know enough back then, and the barely started project has followed me along ever since, up until I got a job at a tech company and then Covid locked us all in our homes for the better part of a year. To avoid going stir crazy, I picked up the project of making a Raspberry Pi handheld again. I completely 3D printed uh, this one, and I hacked a Raspberry Pi Zero into my childhood Game Boy Color. It turns out making good buttons is really, really hard, so arguably the better console I have made was the revamped Game Boy Color with its original Nintendo membrane buttons. I wanted to make more. I had learned a lot about making these things, like how to get these pretty cheap SPI displays running well, how to do sound and some basic battery management, and I eventually had the idea of trying to make a tidier, more full-featured Game Boy Pi, and I began learning how to make printed circuit boards. I had the idea of making my own motherboard for the Game Boy Color uh, to completely replace all the Nintendo electronics, preserving the form factor and the feel of the classic handheld, but with, you know, a whole brand new computer bolted in. I've actually been through three whole revisions of this idea, and the most recent revision well, actually works. So what exactly does it do? Well, it fits into a Game Boy Color. Alright, it's slightly more complex than that. I'm actually really proud that I've gotten this far. This assembly, I think you'll agree, is quite clever. First of all, you bolt a 3D printed piece onto the PCB with some long bolts. Uh, the flex cable for the display passes through the PCB and fits into a ZIF connector on the back and the display friction fits into the 3D printed piece. And then with some little 3D printed sleeves over the long bolts, a Raspberry Pi can be sat on top on these pogo pins and bolted down into place. This wasn't just an exercise in getting a bunch of parts to work together, I wanted to produce some hardware that could form the core of a kit so other people could make a retro gaming Game Boy. There's very little soldering involved on the PCB as received from the manufacturer. Well, that will be the case once I've incorporated all of these bodges into a fourth revision. Next, we can assemble the module we just made into the case of a Game Boy Color. Uh, this case isn't even an original one. Uh, no Game Boy Colors were hurt in the making of this console. This is a third-party replacement case from AliExpress. Now it is fiddly sliding in the circuit board and getting the power switch and the IR lens seated properly, but you know, far from impossible. In order to avoid hacking away at the enclosure as much as possible, the Raspberry Pi Zero ends up poking out the top of the game slot. Uh, this was an issue with an obvious solution, 3D printed Game Boy and Game Boy Color cartridges. I really like the idea that you could print off one of these cartridge shells in the color of the cartridge your favorite game came in, find some cart art, and then you could have any game you like living in the back of the converted console. And after that, you're only several weeks away from working out how to configure all the software. Okay, let's um, let's take this thing for a drive. On close inspection, there's something not quite right with the cartridge, but I think the effect is fantastic. This looks and feels just like a Game Boy Color. You turn it on in the normal way, and then it does a little dance to let you know something's happening. You can see the status LED is dimmable and RGB, and we can dim the backlight up and down as well. After 30 to 60 seconds, depending on the flavor of Raspberry Pi installed, the display kicks in and the booting animation stops and we're dumped into the cutest little desktop you ever did see. This is more or less how RetroPie looks on a monitor or on a TV. Now I'm sure we're all aware that Nintendo is really weird about anything that once existed as a real thing on a store shelf, so you'll just have to take my word for it here that there are definitely no Game Boy or Game Boy Color ROMs on here. But RetroPie can absolutely emulate those two consoles brilliantly. As well as my own Game Boys, there was a Sega Game Gear kicking around the house, and that belonged to my older brother, uh, and it was coveted by me and my younger brother. 
So let's take a look at Halley Wars, a game you've probably never heard of, but me and my brother know exactly what pixel each attacker appears at. Okay, we're emulating a game. A Game Gear game, no less, on a Game Boy Color. There's a couple more features I want to show off uh, before I save the Earth from an alien invasion. You can hear sound. This is one of the trickier things to accomplish on a Pi Zero, and the volume wheel works just as you'd expect it to. We also have a new hardware function that was never on the original Game Boy that we need a control for, and that's the backlight on the display. If we hold the down direction button and then roll the volume wheel, the status light turns purple and the volume dial now controls the backlight intensity. The purple status light tells you the volume dial is out of sync with the actual volume level, so you have to find the right position, the light turns back to red, and now you're controlling the volume again. Okay, let's go kick some alien butt. There's more features in this thing that I haven't really covered at all. I have a tendency to really over-explain, and I just need to accept that USB hubs aren't very interesting. So here we go, rapid fire features. There is a four port USB hub baked into my PCB. All of the major components are connected over USB, and the Pi Zero famously only has one USB port. Two of the onboard USB devices are a sound card, giving full sound processing functionality to the Game Boy, and an RP2040. This is a microcontroller, it's the chip found on our Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's here to do the hardware stuff. It reads the volume pots, does the lights and buttons, all of the stuff you touch basically. The remaining two USB connections are connected to USB connectors. There's a USB-C port where the link cable used to go. So the idea is that you could also charge the batteries using this connector. I haven't got battery charging fully working yet, but power electronics is hard. I'll get there. The batteries in question live in the battery compartment, just as God intended. There's also a little micro A port configured as a on-the-go USB port. You need a dongle to turn this into the USB port you're actually looking for. And this is inaccessible once everything's installed and the case is all buttoned up. It's just there to make connecting a keyboard and a mouse much easier during setup. I am super proud of this project. I feel like I've successfully made a console, and in doing so I can now record an entire era of games right into a physical thing. I can give this to my kid and let him see how gaming looked, felt and smelled back at the dawn of video games. Hey Robin. What do you think? This doesn't need a cloud service to operate, it will just work like this forever if, you know, Wi-Fi disappeared tomorrow. I haven't developed anything proprietary or done anything particularly complex here, I've just been driven by a really laser-focused vision of an end thing, and here it is. I am totally blinded at the moment by how cool I think this is, so if you think this is also cool, and if you could see it maybe being you know, a successful Kickstarter, then please let me know. I can make it much cheaper if I put in a big order for lots of PCBs all at once. I'll be putting any updates to this project here on this channel in the future, and I'll also be making uh, more videos about inventing strange products, so be here to subscribe if you'd like that sort of thing. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Um, I love you. Bye-bye.